Hi, Catherine. How are you doing? All right. Thanks so much for your submission. Thank you very much. Um, I see that we don't have the PDF. Sometimes it's a really great idea, not only to include your work right in the, the body copy here in your post, but also to include a PDF so we can zoom in and do, you, you remember how I like to zoom in in, in, in the videos and get, get into some really close areas so we can take a, a nice close look, zooming in and zooming out. Can't do that without the PDF. So moving forward, maybe um, consider uh, not only including the work in your post, but also as a PDF. So that when I critique it, I can't do two things like zoom in and zoom out. Okay, I think you got a great start here. Really, really good job. Um, a couple of things that we, we see is, is there's a little bit of inconsistency in the, the fill color. That's the black that you colored in the, the, the hard lines with. A um, little bit of inconsistency there. So you may want to shoot for a, a uniform black as a fill color for the, uh, for the different letter forms. Um, as far as the, your rendering of the letter forms, I think it's really remarkable the amount of consistency that you've got. I mean, these A's are almost identical. You see a little bit of difference um, in the negative space or the counter space associated with this closed uh, with this uh, closed counter down here, associated with the, the bowl of the lowercase a. A little bit of different shape there than here. I think this is, rings more to true because it's more of a teardrop tape uh, shape. As we can see, the counter in that lowercase a does have a, a, a teardrop shape. So, um, but it, as I said, I think that consistency is really remarkable. One thing we're not really seeing is this little tail in the A right here has a little bit of a curve to it, as you can see right here. Uh, we can see it there, but we're not really seeing it in your lowercase a. So you want definitely want to be aware of that. One thing you really want to show is the variable stroke weight associated with this Franklin Gothic. Um, um, sorry, this Franklin book type style. And the reason I say that is if we take a look, one of the defining characteristics of this typeface is these, these, these subtle variations in the stroke width. We can see right here. See how thin that is right there? Much thinner through here than it is through here. That's a lot thicker. And again, that's called a variable stro uh, weight stroke. And uh, we can see it here and here. And in a couple of other areas, we can see that variation in the lowercase n. We can see how that uh, that horizontal, uh, sorry, that vertical stem reaches out to the branch at the end, and we can see it's really thin through here too. Much more thin right there where the, the, the this this area meets the stem than it is the actual stem itself. So you really want to depict those to a high degree of accuracy. Uh, just these are little nuances. I, as I said, I think the, the, the start is fantastic. One of the things I would mention is that you've, you've successfully placed your baseline, mean line, and cap line. Excellent job there. One thing I'm seeing is that baseline doesn't look perfectly level. Um, and it could be possibly the way that you shot this with your camera or scanned it. And, but just when you're doing your sketches, make sure that is perfectly level. Um, and make sure that it's perfectly parallel with the mean line and the cap line. If you have to in your final rendering, if you have to use a straight edge, I'm okay with that. I know the instructions, I know the, the uh, specifications say no tools, no rulers, no straight edge. If you want to fold a piece of paper in half and use that as a straight edge to really establish a good a level baseline and then uh, transpose that to a, to a perfectly parallel um, mean line and cap line, that gives you a good solid foundation to build your letters on. I'm more interested in you building solid letter relationships based on accurate placement of baseline, mean line, and cap line than I am in the actual trying to render a perfectly level baseline, mean line, and cap line perfectly parallel by hand with no tools. Does that make sense to me? It's more important that you're working on the actual letter spacing than pulling your hair out trying to get those, le those lines straight. So if you need to use a straight edge, I'm okay with that in your final rendering. But the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the, the, the very first thing you do is make sure that baseline is straight. That's your foundation, okay? Think of it like this, Catherine. If we're building a house and the foundation is crooked, the house is going to be crooked, right? And we can see that here as this kind of is lower at this end than it is at this end. So therefore, we can see the letters are kind of slanted this way. We can see they're tilted. Um, um, left to right from top to bottom as we can see right here that's got a little bit of a diagonal to it so you really want to make sure your your, your verticals are true verticals 
Okay. Um, as far as your letter spacing goes, I think it, you, you've got really what would be considered a, a good letter spacing, normal letter spacing. But this example is interesting. And the reason it's interesting is because we can clearly see that this space here is a little too wide and the space here is a little too wide. What's the relevance of this? The relevance is this, the, the, the basic underlying premise behind uh, letter spacing is that to allow, sorry about that, is to allow our eye to look at groups of letters as a single word and not a series of letters. Okay, so good letter spacing is going to allow us to look at the word banana and see exactly that, the word banana. Poor letter spacing is going to force us to look at individual letters and sound out the word banana. And now I'm exaggerating a little, but these are called saccadic eye movements. And basically what they equates to is that with proper spacing, the eye is able to perceive this as one word, banana. It registers and we move on to the next word. It, it makes for good expeditious reading. Bad or inconsistent letter spacing creates stops or our brain stops and says, wait, what is that space? And has, we have to make sense of it, right? So as we can see, the, the, the mind is forced to go, banana here as opposed to looking at it and going banana that's the basic premise behind letter spacing and we can see that um, uh, explained wonderfully and this is uh, the um, uh, Catherine Tinkle's article that's required reading for the class and this is located in the resources area but this is a legibility and readability but right over here on this page she does a really good job of explaining and describing the saccadic movements and their relevance to um, expeditious uh, typography. So definitely want to take a look at that. So let's go ahead and take a look at your work. Now, as I said, I think there's an unusually large space here. And this is comparative, okay? This is compared to what is already here. I'm not saying that that space is any larger than this space. I'm saying it appears to be. And again, a lot of what we do in typography is based on optical illusions, also called optical relationships. And these illusions are, they, they amplify inconsistencies. So any kind of inconsistent in space here will force the eye to make these breaks, right? So we can see a little bit of a too, too large of a space right here and right here. So what we're doing is our eye, our mind, instead of going banana, is going B, okay, I see that, A, N, and an A, N, A. So you're looking at this going B, and Anna. So it almost looks like B, and Anna, doesn't it, as opposed to banana. Again, I'm exaggerating, but I want you to really be able to take a look at this and see how the eye could perceive this as B and Anna instead of banana. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a little rule of thumb here. Now, when you kern, when you that's letter spacing. When you kern, this is a great tip for uh, sans serif typefaces, but when you kern sans serif typefaces, the closest space should be between letter forms that are curved. Okay, so you have two letter forms next to each other, two curved letter forms. That's going to be your closest space, right? Followed by the next. Um, closest being the space between a straight letter form and a curved letter form, and then the widest being between two straight letter forms. Okay, so we can see that here. And just so you know, this letter is kerned in an, an example right up here in the announcements called How to Kern Banana. Check it out. There's a video in here. I want you to take a look at that video before your second rendering of Fire and Ice Banana. Um, I'm sorry, Trial by Fire. A banana. So before you turn in Sundays, take a look at this video and, and it'll make a lot of sense in, in letter spacing and the theory behind letter spacing, the reason behind letter spacing and optimal letter spacing. So again, that rule is this. The closest space is between two curved letters, followed by the next closest space being up between a straight and a curve, followed by the widest being between a, the two straight letter forms. And again, notice that it sh when I say the widest space, that doesn't mean that it should be noticeable. It shouldn't. As you can see, this looks very consistent. Each one of the spaces between these letters looks like it, it has the same volume as the spaces between neighboring letters, right? And that's what you're shooting for. You're shooting for unnoticeable letter spacing, yet using that formula where this is the closest, followed by less straight and the curve, followed by two straights, okay? So, Put that to, to put that that work to task, and in your second um, uh, iteration, part two of banana, do Sunday, and we'll take a look at it from there. Now, if you have any questions at all, or if I can make any clarifications at all, please let me know. I'll be glad to do so. All right, good job, thanks, Kathleen.